Okay. I'm Eric Halivni here for Toldot Israel. I'm sitting with Dr. Norman Lamb in Washington Heights, New York on September 22nd, 2008. Why don't you begin by telling me a little bit about your life growing up, where you grew up, family. I was born in Williamsburg, Brooklyn. Today it's a very strictly Hasidic community. Then it was more of a good, uh, good auth modern author, as we call today, uh, a community uh, without much extremism uh, and uh, generally a good neighbor to grow up in if you, if you couldn't afford to go to a better place. Um, I was there for about 20 years. Um, I went, my schooling is yeshiva in the Sifra of Torah Vidas, which today would be regarded as a right-wing yeshiva. Then it was one of the only ones, so we didn't have right or left then. Uh, it was a happier day. Um, my relation to Israel, first of all, as a student of in the yeshiva, of course I had a relationship with Eretz Israel. But um, specifically, I remember I was in probably the fifth or sixth grade, and they showed us a movie. Uh, in the movie, you find Yassela Rosenblatt, the famous Hazan, uh, on the Kinneret in a rowboat, and he was singing. Uh, I forget what show, maybe Jerusalem, or Jerusalem, you know, one of the one of the very moving songs. And I was completely taken by it. It was the first exposure I had to modern Israel, and um, it was overwhelming. I think I remember it to this day, and that's quite a time ago. Um, but it's. Um, uh, it was something that it, it attracted me. Something in me reacted. It, it, uh, it, it had a good, a good re reaction, and um, uh, that started off my feelings about modern Israel. As time went on, of course, uh, we hit the, the Holocaust and all that goes with it. Uh, we didn't know very much in the beginning. Later on, we learned. I can still remember coming back from, to, from high school uh, to my home in Williamsburg. I passed a newsstand. I saw a headline of the New York Post, six million Jews killed. Uh, it sort of made the whole, uh, whole thing very personal. And since then, to this day, I still think, what would happen if a Nazi came against me here? Uh, it was a profound uh, feeling. I never discussed it very much, but it's um, something that uh, accounted for a great deal of my life. I don't think I would obsess, I did not obsess about it, but I was constant awareness of it. Now I went, I came from Torah Vadas, I went to Yeshiva University, uh, and I uh, came here in 1945, so uh, we were here. At that time, I had, in my younger years, I was a member of the Tzirei or Pirchei Agudas Yisrael, the Children's Agud of Israel. and. Um, And uh, I started to, I spoke there very often uh, as a youngster. And then uh, we decided to try out the Shomer Hadati, which is one of the youth organizations of religious Zionism, uh, later become absorbed into, um, into Mizrahi, Paul and Mizrahi. Uh, and uh, it was a very, it was a romance of kinds, because since, since I remember Yossel Rosenblatt, it always, the picture always stayed with me. But in yeshiva, of course, there were strong groups of more Zionists, less Zionists, but very much attached to, to Medina Yisrael. Can I, I take you back a step? Do you remember hearing at all at home? Did your parents ever talk about uh, Palestine or Zionism? All the time, all the time. Not Zionism as such. We we were not from we were not um, from an official Zionist family, but as Jews, as Orthodox Jews, of course, it was very very important to us. We discuss it often, and. Also in relation to the Holocaust, I remember when it was very dark, in the very, very dark days, 1942, 1943, 40. In those years, I remember my father came home with my mother and my three siblings, and he discussed something which to this day shocks me, that we took it very calmly. He said, what happens if Hitler comes to this country? I think, he said, we should all commit suicide. Now, it's, this is not a joke. It was not meant to be uh, uh, just chattering. Uh, so we were very, very 
keenly conscious of both the negative and the positives. Uh, negatives meaning the Holocaust, the Shoah, and the positives meaning the linkage to Israel, to Eretz Israel, and then Medina Israel. Do you, do you remember people coming through uh, Williamsburg or anything that were from, uh, that were representatives either of Jewish agency or any of the Zionist movements that were coming through speaking or? Not very much when I was a child, when I was a youngster. In college, yes. We had a number of people came and spoke about, about Palestine then. Uh, so it was, it was in the air, you, you felt it. Uh, I then started to belong, as I said, to the Shomer Adati, and, and I was affiliated with them. And uh, when we came to school in college years, um, I was in, here in Yeshiva as a college student, Yeshiva College, 1945 through 1949. Um, so this happened, so the founding of the state in May 15, 1948, came right when I was going to college. At that time, we were very concerned because uh, we knew that the uh, the Haganah uh, was outnumbered vastly, uh, quantitatively, and we hope, we think qualitatively too, to an extent, although later it turned out not to be true. But we felt we have to do something. So what happened was that many of the classmates uh, of yeshiva, at Yeshiva um, were asked to go down to a place in the West Village, I believe, and here they were sending blankets to Israel, to Palestine and Israel. However, in between every blanket, there was a rifle. So we, we smuggled it in, actually. And, uh, and I, I, don't, I don't remember under whose auspices it was. It must have been the a Jewish agency. Uh, and the kids felt really very, very much uh, empowered by it and very excited, eager to do it. I thought, meanwhile, that just packing things, anyone can do that. Maybe, maybe, maybe I can do something special. I was a chemistry major. I did four years of chemistry in in uh, yeshiva and one year in postgraduate work in Brooklyn Polytech. But th that year I was a, I believe it was a junior or a senior in college. And uh, I had the idea that maybe science students can do something more. So I got hold of my friends, a few of them. Uh, one of them is still, uh, still uh, with us for many years, I hope. Uh, his name was then was Schoner, Melon Schoner, and I was uh, Shmuel Sprecher. He uh, got his PhD from chemistry from Columbia and he went on, uh, he went on to uh, become a professor at Barilan, and then the, uh, the, uh, he got a job as basically the top professor in Barilan. Uh, he was a provost, I think. And then he retired, and he lives, uh, he lives in Israel now. And uh, a very brilliant he was, also, he was also my chavrusa. I got him. I got Matty, Matthew Katz, Allah Shalom, my roommate who was very good in, in uh, technology, and uh, one or two others uh, who came along. And I gave them my idea. We have to go and volunteer to do something more sophisticated than packing blankets, which is very important. But if we have the capacity, we should use it to the best of our ability. So I picked up the phone and I called up the Jewish agency, as, as I don't know who answered. I said, I we want to do something uh, of the nature of research or whatever we can do. So they connected me to a man called Professor Pecker, Peckeris, Peckeris, P E K E R I S. I never heard of his name before, nor, or nor afterwards. He goes on the phone. I told him what I had in mind. In the middle of my talk, he stops me. He says, Shut up and come over here immediately. Now, I just, not because of that kind of talk, but I was taken aback and I just did that. I shut up and I went down to see him and he apologized. He said, The reason I was so abrupt was our wires are tapped. It's none of the FBI's business what we're doing. I began to understand the nature of the project. The result was that um, two of my friends, Matthew Cass, as I mentioned, the other one, William Frank. William Frank was probably one of the most brilliant people I ever met. Uh, as a youngster, he was already <laughs> more beyond, beyond the children's stuff. Before his bar mitzvah, he had already written two papers. One was a running commentary on Kant's uh, critique of pure reason, and the other one was a, uh, a paper on Einstein's special theory of relativity before his bar mitzvah. So he was a very, very brilliant physicist, mathematical physicist. Well, uh, the Katz and Frank uh, were assigned to do some work in a storefront in the West Village. And Schoner and I were sent up to East Fishkill, New York. It's in the Caskills, but not in the Jewish part of the Caskills. 
It's the, um, not far from Newburgh. Uh, there, there was a, a rather large home owned, I was told, by a sympathizer to Zionism. I never met him, didn't hear his name. One of the problems of it was that uh, there's no running water, no plumbing. So we had to throw down a bucket with a pulley and bring, bring up the water every day for use of the people who were there. Who was there? Well, let me tell you what happened. I came up there by myself. Shono came up a day or two later. And I... When is this? 48. And uh, 48, maybe 49, probably 48. Uh, and I uh, walk into this place I was told to come to, and I see a little man lying on his, on his back underneath a frame of a uh, bed. Uh, and he, he's painting. So I looked at him and I said, hello? He said, hello, Z this is okay, no? I said, no, it's not okay. He was very upset. I was being funny, of course. Turns out this man was uh, Professor Berman, Bergman, who was later to become the head of the Israel Atomic Energy Commission. And I was joking with him as a youngster. Uh, he was there, uh, two or three civil engineers from Israel, uh, very good in English, so I don't know where they were from. But what struck me in this place immediately was my relation to Zionism was uh, Havana Gila, you know, singing and dancing, uh, which was very important. Nothing very serious, though. And here I found people who never talked about Zionism, never talked about patriotism, but just did good work, very good work. Serious, pleasant, without being overbearing. Well, they put us to work. And the project was to develop. Uh, Israel had some guns. Pr primarily it was the, the WK, as they call it. Uh, and, uh, but they had no munitions. And they wanted to be able to, to manufacture munitions, bullets. They didn't have enough nat uh, natural resources then to be able to do it. So our mission was to develop a bullet from the material available to the uh, Jews in Israel uh, and to be able to get to them back to them on time. So they gave us our jobs. We had to do it, but we did it. Um, at one point, uh, there, was, we, there was an alarm, and we all scrambled, took all our papers and chemicals, put them away, and a whole set of other papers and chemicals. I looked about this whole thing, very strange. Turns out the FBI was coming, and we, our excuse was we're doing research on, on um, uh, fertilizers. Uh, so they came, and they left, and of course they winked, you know. They knew what it was all about, and we knew what it was all about, we weren't going to say anything. As soon as they left, everything went reverse. Right? All, the, uh, the, all the stuff about fertilizer went into the drawers, and the stuff we're working on came out. Um, I was appointed uh, to be in charge of uh, burning the gar in the garbage. I thought burning in the garbage, this is what I studied chemistry for for four years, it's impossible. A very young man full of enthusiasm with a little bit of an ego, and I thought we can do more than burning garbage. So I reluctantly went and threw the garbage outside and threw a match and I stayed there, and they started to scream, run, run, I said, I ran. What am I running from? Very, very soon I found out. The garbage had all combustible materials, it had all, all the uh, stuff for the bullets, and it just blew out, and I barely saved my life uh, because I listened to them and ran. Um, but again, it was, a, it was a great experience. And um, uh, some, of our, some of the schoolmates said that they were not in the scientific, uh, uh, not in the science group, uh, but were very much, um, very much uh, uh, the Irgun, whatever they call it in those days, the... Uh, Etzel, the... Pardon? Etzel, or Irgun? No, no, but in, in America, they were, they were basically very... And they, two of them, remember, they, one was Tversky and one was, what was something else? And um, they stowed aboard uh, a, a ship going to Palestine, and they were discovered, and they were interned in Cyprus for the remainder of the war. So every one of yeshiva was involved in one way, packing, science, uh, going. It was a uh, it was a great opportunity to, to express our avat Yisrael, and uh, and Zionism in a very practical way. Again, no hora, no have no no have any but real, real serious stuff. Uh, did we succeed? I think we did at the end, and the, we got the formula. 
uh, and they were able to manufacture the bullets for the Davidka, uh, which is something which we made us very happy and very pleased. Were you, did, your, did you tell your parents that you were going? Did and you of tell? course. And of course, I, <laughs> I had a, <laughs> it was very hot summertime in East Fishkill, and there was a brook, and we all went to just to bathe. I was the only one, apparently, who knew anything about swimming, but very little. So I jumped in, and I started to drown, because we didn't realize the stream but around the bend was a waterfalls. And what happened was they couldn't swim. I was, a big, I was the big shot, and I was drowning. They formed a human chain, holding on, someone on ground holding on to someone's feet to hold on to someone else, and they pulled me out. So I almost paid a very big price for my Zionism. Uh, but fortunately, it, <laughs> it didn't come to pass. Uh, do you know how, how long were you up? Uh, were you there for the summer? Several weeks, mm -hmm. several weeks. But in order to do it, we had to prevail upon the dean of the, of the college to let us go and not take, not take finals, to get a grade for everything but without taking finals. And I was very worried about that because the dean, the name was Moses Legas Isaacs. The Isaacs are an old American family. Uh, and surprisingly, he was the first Republican I ever met. I couldn't imagine how a Jew could be anything but a Republic, but, but a Democrat. Uh, also, he was very American, very much, uh, very much an Agudenik, and um, a very interesting man. A very good, he was, his specialty was two things, sewage and milk. The chemistry of sewage and the chemistry of milk. Um, well, we told him the story, and he said, okay. Despite the fact that he was an Agudenik, he understood what we were all about, and he gave us permission to go. Do you remember? Uh, do you remember where you were on November 29, 1947, uh, for the UN? Vote? I was in, sitting in my grandparents' home in front of a big radio. In those days, before transistors, the radio was a was a piece of furniture. Listening to the uh, vote up or down uh, in the UN Security Council. So I think Guatemala, when that he was the first one that showed that we can we're going to go into, we're going to win this tie, and uh, it was a very exciting time. Do you, do you remember uh, what the reaction was at Yeshiva College afterwards, or what? Uh oh, I, can, I don't remember what happened here in Yeshiva College. I imagine it was tremendously. Um, we, we were so completely involved, so completely devoted, uh, because of the of the propinquity of of the Shoah so ah, and the the birth of the state. Uh, it, it enveloped us completely, completely. Um, looking back now, uh, 60 years later, do you have any, do you have any regrets on, uh, regrets? No, nothing at all. It's, uh, one of the things that I regard as one of the highlights of my life because I was able to meet people whom I really respected because of their knowledge and, um, realize that everything else is secondary to, to the real work that was being done. So I'm grateful for it. it initiated me into a different kind of pattern of existence. Now, you have to do things sometimes, even if it's done uh, quietly, even if it's against the law, but there's a higher law we had to obey, we had to obey and it worked out, thank God. Uh, reflecting on you, do you think that this had an impact on the way that you related to Israel over the course of... Uh, oh, it really okay. completely reinforced it, completely reinforced it. I mean, eventually, I always dreamt of Aliyah, uh, and when I graduated from college, I was offered uh, a four-year scholarship to Hadassah Medical School, and I wasn't interested in medicine. In those days, I was interested in something that challenges the brain, and that was research. In those days, medicine was, uh, was more or less a, 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 like a, 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 a menu for, for dinner. Uh, and, of course, I, I was mistaken, because later it turned out medicine was very much in the front, of, the front line of scientific research. Anyway, I didn't want to become a doctor. So I told them I have to turn it down. So they said, okay, we'll talk to the family. And they said, if you want to go for four years to get a PhD in Hebrew University, in chemistry, we'll pay for that too. So now I was faced, what do I do? So I was, half of me said, look, my main interest in life was learning, was Talmud, and I'm, other half of my life is very much uh, 
in, uh, very much uh, Israel oriented. So I didn't know what I remember. I remember taking a book a, 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 through a pad. One side reasons for going, other side reasons for not going. Staying here came out even. It's uh, shakul, and um, uh, I decided to go to my parents. My parent, my father said, "Go to Israel. We have enough rabbis here. We go to Israel, and become a Talmud Chacham on your own. But go to Israel." My mother said, "No, don't stay here." because I, she was the descendant from a long line of great Tamil Chachamim, and um, so they didn't help me much because they were one against one. So I went to a man who then was my Rebbe in Yeshiva, Dr. Samuel Belkin, who turned out was my, was not only his Talmud, also his successor after a number of years. Um, and he said to me, I told him, Rebbe, I want you to tell me what to do, but don't give me any reasons, because if you give me, if you give me reasons, I'll find other reasons to go against it. Just tell me, what shall I do? He says, stay here. So I stayed here. I stayed here for most of my career, but then, many years later, I was um, asked to take over the presidency of Bar Ilan. And uh, we were very serious at that time. In fact, my wife and I were already looking for a, a house in one of the towns next to Bar Ilan. But as luck would have it, uh, we couldn't get along on certain details, and it was canceled. But I was almost there. Uh, any from this experience that uh, that you had uh, sixty years ago, are there uh, lessons or messages that uh, that that you would want to impart to? Children, grandchildren, based upon uh, you know the the decisions that you made then, or well, you know, it, yeah, it, it, look, we, we were never a party, a, never politically involved in this kind of Zionism or that kind of Zionism, and that didn't matter to us much. We just loved Israel, and in that case, we're real Zionim. Um, my family, after me, of course, uh, the children went along too. Um, my children don't, didn't live there, but my grandchildren. I have a sister who went on Aliyah uh, in uh, Ramat Eshkol, and um, I now have a granddaughter who married uh, another person from New Jersey, and they moved, and they went on Aliyah. And I have other of my children are planning, or grandchildren are planning to, to live there. So it was a, you know, a non-political, but very strongly uh, Eretz Yisrael, Medina Yisrael oriented. Uh, I think that we've covered uh, we've covered it. I very much appreciate it. My pleasure. Thank you very much. Good luck on it. Thank you. If we could do thirty seconds of silence just to record our room tone in here, that will be helpful in post if it gets edited to anything. You, you want me to keep quiet for thirty seconds in a row? <laughs> if possible. Okay. Um, all right. Room tone. The second Halivni that I know. <laughs> there's, uh, there's a very, very big scholar by the name of David Weiss Halivni. Yes. So he won Pras Yisrael this year. Yes, yeah. I know. So a lot of, uh, a lot of people were asking. I have a seven-year-old son. Yeah. Were asking him if his grandfather won Pras Yisrael. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> he had to say that it wasn't. Uh, For your children's grandchildren's sake, say yes. <laughs> <laughs> good. Good luck on it. <laughs>